what's crazy is like uh, you know you used to weed and alcohol and maybe cocaine like not not but like hearing people do drugs and then when you hear Steve's like drug breakdown you're like ketamine like he's doing like, uh, horse tranquil like dad, what dad is never that used to cocaine i think it's probably safe to say dad's never laid eyes no, on no. cocaine in his life i don't mean to say that but like the norm of drugs you know you, 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 right. you, you, you've heard about cocaine dad, heard about I, I, I was not into that no though. no to be clear i'm not saying that you were i'm okay. sorry like i'm just saying like you know the, the you've heard about people doing it in the movies but like when you hear of steve's what dad drug breakdown me, dad dad actually was with me brought me to the rehab to check me in and, and was sitting there in the room when when they did their uh, orientation process to, to, to the, the intake and they said okay what are your drug history what are your drugs and dad for the first time was hearing this list of, of drugs and there was like shit he never even heard of in his life what like, do you remember what the drug breakdown I mean, was? it would have been like yeah like pcp nitrous oxide ketamine you know like video head cleaner like you know what like what the fuck like it was uh you know i mean if you want to you remember what, that yeah oh, vividly <clears throat> and you're, you're you're skipping over what i think was one of the toughest but one of the best decisions of my life you were having your final breakdown Right, and you were sending so you were sending emails to yeah. half the world talking right. about how you were going to drive yeah. a motorbike through your apartment sure. the window. Email list. Right. The rat Everybody knows that, but what they don't know is that when Knoxville organized my intervention, he reached out to you and he said, "Mr. Glover, we're organizing an intervention for for your son, and we really want you to be there. Maybe need you to be there." And Dad said, "I said no," and I thought really hard about it. And uh, with hindsight, I was absolutely right. Steve and I had a good relationship then, with one exception, he wouldn't allow me to talk about his personal life. And I knew personal, I mean, the, 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 about, no, the, no, the, but, about the drinking yeah, and all that had, shit. I would not let you, our, our relationship was on my terms. Yes. Because yes. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't financially dependent on you. Like, yeah. I, I could have ostensibly just cut you out of my life and been fine. Yeah, yeah. So I, I uh, reasoned, I think, correctly, that if I had been there, you and I would have been in the center of the room shouting at each other, and all your jackass buddies would have, would have been, been neutralized. neutralized in dead silence. Mm. So I told Knoxville, and, and, and Dr. Drew called me, too, and I said the same thing to Drew. I said, uh, you know, I'm going to come out, but I'm not going to come for the intervention because his jackass friends will do a much better job without me right. than they could possibly do with me. Yeah, and, and I think that, that that was absolutely right. And so then they locked up in the psych ward, and then I agreed in the psych ward to go to the rehab, and you were with me at the rehab. Absolutely. And, and, and while we're checking into the rehab, Dad says to me, says, you know, well, like, once once we get this behind us, you know, like once, you know, you do this, and, and, and I said, Dad's never going to be get behind us you know I said, once we once 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 we fix this dad this doesn't get fixed i said dad i'm a drug addict i'm an alcoholic that's never gonna change i'm it's gonna be for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and the fact that you were married to mom for 25 years and you still don't understand that is fucking you know like i, I all of a sudden like that was day one of rehab mm -hmm. and uh just because you knew like it, I, I knew even it. staying sober it's a, just a lifelong yeah, yeah. struggle i knew all about for. it and my experience with my mom yeah and, and i said dad i thought I said, Dad, I'm here because I'm going to take this really seriously, and uh, and, and if you're going to uh, if if, if you if you're going to not get in the way of it, I need you to I need you to sign up to be a part of Al-Anon and stuff. So Dad signs up for Al-Anon. <laughs> I, I went to regular Al-Anon meetings in both London and Florida for at least a year. Yeah, and, and then his dad says to me, he says, I don't get it. He says, all these people in these meetings, you know, like, they seem to be there for, for their own benefit, and, and I'm fine. Like, I don't need any help. I'm just here to support you. And I say, okay, Dad, next time, why don't you just hand me a beer and a joint and call it <laughs> No, <a day?" laughs> no, no. I, 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 I got one thing out of Al-Anon that I'll never forget. It was in Florida, and uh, there was a woman who was probably in her 60s, and her uh, husband, you know, I'm not sure if he was in recovery or if he was still struggling. But she said something I'll never forget. She said, you know, if you're living with somebody who is mentally ill, you cannot avoid yep. becoming mentally ill yourself. Mm -hmm. Correct. And boy, that resonated with me. Yep. Can I just tell you how fucked up my new tour is? It's completely multimedia, legitimately X-rated. There's legal waivers all over the venue because I'm actually worried about getting sued. And I don't give a fuck, man, because it's gnarly and it's all the stuff I wasn't allowed to do on Jackass. So... 
Get to my fucking website, steveo.com, and get your tickets, man. Especially with this movie coming out, dude. They're all going to sell, dude, so hurry up while you can get seats. Yee-hoo!